Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today I want to comment on the question from one of the researchers which I found on the ResearchGate website and here is a question. Why my single-stranded DNA band showed higher than double-stranded DNA on agarose gel? And here is this gel and here is a question itself. I am doing asymmetric PCR to amplify single-stranded DNA using forward and reverse ratio of the primers 1 to 10. Let me comment right away. Imagine that we are doing PCR. So here we start with double-stranded DNA and we design forward primer. So here is going to be forward primer and here is going to be a reverse primer. And of course forward primer we are going to use to extend new strand of the DNA in the direction from 5 prime end to 3 prime end. And another reverse primer we are also going to use to extend the strand of the DNA also from 5 prime end to 3 prime end direction. And in normal PCR reaction we use equal number of the forward and reverse primers. So as you see ratio of the forward and reverse primers is 1 to 1. But when we perform asymmetric PCR, in this case we use more primers of one kind. For example, it can be forward primers and that would lead that we are going to get more of this product than this product. For example, our new ratio is going to be 10 to 1. So in this case, of course, uh, in our result of our PCR is going to be that we are going to have more of this single stranded DNA than this one. Let's take a look at our gel again. This band here represent a product of the PCR with the ratio of 1 to 1 of the primers. So this bright band is double stranded DNA. Result of the PCR with 1 to 1 ratio of the forward and reverse primers would be double stranded DNA which we can find here. But if we are doing asymmetric PCR we are going to get two products. One would be double stranded DNA and we also are going to have in excess single stranded DNA because we are going to produce it in more quantity so it's not going to have another strand of the DNA which would be complementary to form a double stranded DNA. Hence we have here two bands. One band is brighter represent double stranded DNA and another one is dimmer which represent single stranded unbounded DNA. Let's continue reading. So I already optimized the PCR cycle annealing temperature of my PCR conditions but when I detected my product with 1% agarose gel single stranded DNA band detected higher than the double stranded band. As I know single stranded DNA has to be lower than double stranded DNA because they migrate faster. Strangest thing that is double stranded DNA band from the symmetric PCR product showed higher than the normal forward reverse ratio of the primers 1 to 1 PCR product band. My target product size is 185 base pairs. So as I said this is 1 to 1 ratio target uh, DNA size 100. 85 base pairs and here on this side we have loading wells. So 1, 2, 3 and 4. And we load DNA here and it moves in this direction. So don't this arrow here confuse you. DNA moves in this direction. It's just refers to the size of this band. So DNA is negatively charged and is going to move from negative electrode to 
positive electrode. So this is single stranded DNA and this is double stranded DNA. Imagine that these dots represent gel and through this gel we run these two kinds of the DNA. And you expect that this one would move slower than this one because it's bigger, at least twice bigger and molecular weight is going to be twice than this one. So we expect that it moves slower. But what we see here that it actually moves faster than single stranded DNA. Why this happens? First of all, DNA moves through the gel electrophoresis because it has negative charges along each backbone. And in double stranded DNA, two backbones. In single stranded DNA, one backbone. So actually, this molecule has more negative charges than single stranded DNA. But this is not the single explanation. Double stranded DNA is going to move through the gel, let's say something like this, but single stranded DNA may take different conformations. It can be self complementary. So it can make different shapes, which as you see, interfere with its movement through the gel. So different conformations that single stranded DNA may take would interfere with its movement through the gel. Also take a look. Again, this is double stranded DNA. This is basis. And here is a single stranded DNA. And here is a going to be open basis, which would make hydrogen bonding. Here, hydrogen bonding is made between two strands of the DNA. And hydrogen bonding also would slow down the movement of the single stranded DNA through the gel, which is 98 or 99 percent water and 1 or 2 percent is agarose. We call this process salvation. So this is a process that can affect the physical and chemical properties of the DNA molecule, such as conformation and stability, and can play a role in various biological processes such as DNA replication, transcription and repair. So basically it is not uh, something strange that single stranded DNA moves slower than double stranded DNA because of its different conformations that it can take and hydrogen bonding that it can form with uh, media, with agarose gel. And this is all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.